My name is Sam Meisler, and I'm a small animal veterinarian. In this segment, let's talk about dog heart failure. Heart failure in dogs can be very devastating, usually occurs in much older dogs, and these dogs generally have symptoms of coughing, exercise intolerance, which means they, they just can't, they're not energetic as before, they can't run as much as before, they just seem that they run out of steam quicker, and that's exercise intolerance. Sometimes you'll see a swollen abdomen as fluid starts to back up. Those are kind of the general symptoms. Usually on physical exam, your veterinarian can hear what's called a heart murmur. And all a heart murmur means is that the normal lub-dub sounds in the heart sound more like a whoosh-whoosh. And that's caused by turbulence in the heart. Something's not letting the blood flow normally through the heart. Most commonly in older dogs, we have an issue with the heart valves. Now in the heart, we have two big chambers called ventricles. The left ventricle, which pumps blood to the body, and the right ventricle, which pumps blood to the lungs. Then we have two atrium, which actually collect the blood on the blood's way to the ventricles. So we have a right atrium and a left atrium. Now, in between these chambers, and also at the exit points of the two ventricles, we have valves. They're little doorways let close at various points during the heart pumping cycle. When blood flows from the lungs, say, back to the left atria and then into the left ventricle, we want that door to open to let the blood in. But when we're ready to pump to the rest of the body, we want that door, the back door, so to speak, where the atrium was, where the blood was coming through, we want that door to shut. So that when the heart squeezes, all the blood goes forward to the body. Now, if that door, that valve, has a hole in it, or one of the leaflets of the door has a hole in it or is degenerated, which is the most common thing we see in these older dogs, then you will have blood go backwards. Most of it will go forwards, but some will go backwards. Back up into the atria, and you'll get increased pressure behind, because when the heart pumps, 80% say is going forward, a little bit is going backward. It makes for an inefficient heart. When a heart is inefficient, it has to work harder. That muscle has to pump harder. And when it's pumping harder, it will build up. Muscle mass, when worked, will grow. When you work out, your muscles grow. Same with the heart. Now, we can see that on an x-ray has a enlarged heart. So when we see a dog with a heart murmur, we take an x-ray, we see an enlarged heart, and based on the x-ray, we can kind of tell which side of the heart is enlarged as well and get a guess as to which valve is affected or what problem we might have. Now, when you have this happen, there are things you can do medically to help the dog out. First of all, when you have fluid back up into the lungs because the heart's pumping some of it backwards into the lungs, you'll get some fluid leakage in the lungs, and that's called congestion. You may even get some fluid back in all the way up into the liver, and the liver start leaking fluid into the abdomen. That is because when the heart pumps, some is going backwards. So some of our medications are directed against, even though we have a hole going backwards, if we give a medication that makes the exit point going into the rest of the body, the vessel going to the rest of the body, if we give a medication that enlarges that vessel, then maybe even with the same hole behind us, we may get 90% of the blood going down that vessel if we can enlarge that vessel, and that's a vasodilator. That's one of our most common therapies. We give that to humans as well. The most common drug we use is a, like, uh, uh, called an enalapril. Now, the other thing we can do is try to decrease the amount of fluid coming through. If we decrease the fluid that's in the system, then when the heart pumps and some of it goes backwards, there's less fluid back there anyway, so we'll get less congestion and less fluid in the lungs. And we use a diuretic. Lasix is the most common diuretic we use, or Salix. A lot of people refer, it has their, refer to it as their water pill. Those are a couple of drugs that can help congestive heart failure. And if we can manage that, then sometimes we'll have 
a more efficient heart, your dog will get more energy, be able to have a better quality of life. But that gives you a real basic idea of congestive heart failure. Again, when your dog is presented, the exam by your veterinarian is fundamental to determining whether your dog has heart failure. Then doing an x-ray, often doing an echocardiogram where you look at the actual valves themselves and get a diagnosis to see which valve is the problem. It also can measure how well the muscle walls are contracting. Those are all good tests. An EKG, somewhat less useful in the dog than with people, but it's still important to make sure we don't have any irregular heartbeats or anything like that. Gives you an idea, this gives you an idea of heart failure in dogs, and hopefully it'll help you with, with your own dog as far as understanding the disease.